Welcome to Inside Games, the only gaming news show brave enough to warn you that sometimes Bethesda game director Todd Howard can play a little fast and loose with uh, the truth. All of this just works. No, oh, Todd Howard? My? <laughs> Bruce, don't, don't even, don't. I'm not kidding. I mean, I don't know that he's lying so much as that he loves his video games, guys. And we love Todd for it, that's for sure. <laughs> it's either that or all we really need to spend is another $10,000 on our PC to finally play Starfield without tons of stutters. I'm out of house at home. How many video cards do I got to put in this thing? Sheesh. <laughs> yeah, it's more mixed messaging out there about Starfield with game director Todd Howard insisting Starfield is properly optimized for PC and nearly everyone else disagreeing. There's also been a general backslide in sentiment in the days since release. The game's Metacritic score has dropped a few points and perhaps more relevant to PC performance issues, the game's positive user rating has dropped on Steam. The good news here is that, as usual for a Bethesda game, the modding community is already hard at work delivering tweaks and fixes on a daily basis at this point that uh, arguably should have been in the game when it came out. Gosh, we really are hitting the entire list of Bethesda's greatest hits with Starfield, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also the game's fun, so everybody's having a great time. Now, there's lots to go over in today's episode, and we'll get all into it after a quick word from our sponsor, Bloodline Heroes of Lithus. Inside Games is sponsored by Bloodline Heroes of Lithus. It's a hero collector fantasy RPG with a 3D art style in which you can build your kingdom and collect champions to defend it and the world. You create your own unique legendary champions by combining the bloodlines of elves, demons, demigods, orcs, dwarves, lichens, dragonborn, vampires, all sorts of things. And it's absolutely free to play. Download it now using the link in our description or scan the QR code on the screen. The game currently has over 4,000 champion hybrid options for you to create by marrying bloodlines. The game is getting regularly updated, so creating new hybrid combinations kind of never ends. There are guild wars, events, and challenges that you can participate in, and of course, battles in the arena. And there's a great deal of depth in the strategies and builds that you can customize for your champions. Check out the newest bloodline, Tide Razors, who are powerful demigods that originated from the fiercest seas. Download Bloodline Heroes of Lithus for free on Android or iOS. Just click the link in our description or scan the QR code. You'll get a special starter pack worth 20 bucks if you use our link. You get one summoning crystal, 100,000 gold, and 100 diamonds. Plus, the first 30 players who leave their in-game account ID and username in the first pinned comment section below will receive a free legendary female succubus champion, the Luxuriant, one of the best mages to carry you in the game. So thanks again to Bloodline Heroes of Lithus for sponsoring Inside Games. Thank you, Bloodline, for the sponsorship. All right, now back to Starfield. It sounded like it was off to a strong start. Obviously, everybody was really excited about it. It officially launched last week on September 6th, and 6 million people played it. Yeah, the user reviews were off the charts. Bethesda said it was their biggest launch ever. Like you said, Bruce, 6 million players. And while Starfield is on Game Pass, it's shockingly also been really high on the Steam sales charts, hitting as high as number two before dipping a bit to third place behind Counter-Strike Global Offensive in Baldur's Gate 3. Not all players are happy with Starfield, particularly PC gamers who have noticed that it has quite a few bugs and performance issues. Come on, guys, we have a bug of you. That's the game, that's not a real thing. Yeah, on PC, never, never, <laughs> gosh. After a week or so with Starfield, folks aren't quite as glowing as they were on, on launch week, uh, and you can see that most on PC. That could be reflected in a drop in Steam user reviews. The game's positive user rating on Steam dropped below 80% over the weekend, downgrading it from very positive to the slightly less impressive, mostly positive. At the time of writing, it's at 77% positive reviews. Only mostly positive. Oh, God. <laughs> How will Bethesda ever recover from this one? Well, simple. They pretend they do not see it. <laughs> Works every time. <laughs> and in fact, they did a great job. It's just your uh, potato PC acting up. Lawrence, just get a better PC. Bloomberg Technology asked Starfield director Todd Howard about the PC issues, just pointedly throwing it out there, saying, quote, why did you not optimize this game for PC? Uh, and Howard's response was less than comforting. Get a better PC is what he said. So here's the full response when asked about optimization. Why did you not optimize this game for PC? Uh, we did, it's running great. It is a next gen PC game. We really do push the technology. So you may need to upgrade your PC for this game, but it's got a lot of great stuff going on in it and the fans are responding awesome. Not everyone really agreed with Todd there. The PC version got a very so-so 5.6 user score on Metacritic. User Riot called Starfield a poorly executed wannabe mashup of No Man's Sky and the Outer Worlds. And user Sparkness1179 said Starfield's graphics were, quote, disappointing. 
especially with such poor optimization such as water bodies, vegetation, etc. Even professional reviewers said Starfield on PC is surprisingly bad, especially on specific PC setups. In a video review, Digital Foundry's Alexander Battaglia said that, quote, if you're on Intel and Nvidia, you're getting a bizarrely worse experience here in comparison to AMD GPUs in a way that's completely out of the norm. Yeah, some people may have seen this one coming. Bethesda partnered specifically with AMD to optimize the game on AMD's GPUs and CPUs. At this point, it's pretty clear that Nvidia didn't have the same level of access. Yeah, that's right. Both companies have been bizarrely weird when it comes to addressing whether or not that AMD partnership specifically forbade other companies proprietary technologies, such as Nvidia's DLSS, or Intel's XESS. Yeah, and this is okay. This is when we start to slip into conspiracy territory. So, I mean, the game shipped without either one, uh, and it did have FSR2 from AMD in there. So, and also it performs measurably worse on non-AMD hardware. So either the sponsorship did forbid other companies' technologies, or Bethesda couldn't be bothered to include them if they weren't getting paid for it. I don't know, maybe there's another option there. Either way, the reality, according to Bataglia, is that Starfield, quote, seems optimized for AMD systems, but not so much so for Intel and Nvidia ones. Yeah, it's not even close either. Comparing two cards that typically perform similarly in most games, that's the AMD RX 6800 XT and the Nvidia RTX 3080, Bataglia found that the AMD card ran 46% faster at ultra settings. Jeez, my gosh. It's outrageous, yeah. That's a lot on top of much lower frame rates. Nvidia video cards also resulted in spikier frame timings when moving around, which resulted in frame drops and video stutters. The AMD bias carries over to the CPUs as well. Intel's hyper-threading technology actually makes the game run worse by about 10%. AMD's equivalent called SMT improved performance like it should. <laughs> <laughs> Starfield's performance also doesn't scale well around Intel CPUs, which is to say, adding more cores doesn't improve performance accordingly. Intel performance actually regressed at a certain point, which is wildly bizarre. Yeah, that used to happen in aughts video games when games weren't really well coded for multiple, uh, like, what was it called? For simultaneous processing, basically, distributing a load across multiple cores. So sometimes you have threads that fight each other or do the same work back to back. That's kind of maybe what's happening on Intel chips. Really, really strange stuff. These manufacturer specific performance issues exist alongside more universal annoyances, like the lack of basic graphical settings. There's no FOV slider, which is just baffling for a PC game. Uh, the PC version also doesn't support HDR, even though the game supports it on Xbox. Yeah, but people are, again, trying to get it in there, but why isn't there? Why? Uh, there's also no image reference in the options to show users what changing any of those options will do to the game's visuals. Instead, there's just a big empty space where that could be. And then uh, what may be the ultimate twist of the knife? <laughs> Digital Foundry compared Starfield's cyberpunky city Neon to Cyberpunk 2077 itself, uh, finding that on the exact same hardware, Cyberpunk performed better than Starfield, and that's with ray tracing on Cyberpunk. And that's, Starfield doesn't even support ray tracing. <laughs> yeah, that one hurts. I mean, Bataglia admits it's not a fair comparison. And I don't know, we tend to agree. That game's been out for a while. It's had some years to iterate and stuff like that. But also, oof, that hurts. It hurts at the same time. And while we're on the topic of fair acknowledgements, we should point out that Nvidia has been doing this for, I mean, you know, decades. <laughs> Nearly every other game out there has been specifically optimized for Nvidia and Intel before it ships, while AMD customers generally have to wait on performance upgrades in the weeks and months after launch. Basically, Nvidia and Intel owners are kind of getting a taste of being on the other side of a lot of corpo money sloshing around for a change. Still, this is a prestige release from one of gaming's biggest developers. We'd like to believe, and maybe even hope, that a game's quality wouldn't be completely at the whim of corporate sponsorship money. Lawrence, that's ridiculous. That's uh, a ridiculous thing that you're saying. Uh, uh, <laughs> or maybe we're just misunderstanding this entire thing. Who knows? Maybe when Todd said, upgrade your PC, he meant switch to AMD TM. Yeah, ding. <laughs> Another hundred grand in the bank account. But hey, if there's one thing PC users are really good at, it's finding ways not to spend money. PC users have had to resort to their own workarounds to improve performance, like the so-called Potato Mod, which replaces all the game's textures with hyper-low-res versions. Oh, wow. Uh, and other modders have already stepped up to fill in the game's deficiencies, like a much-improved UI, or adding support for NVIDIA's DLSS upscaling technology, 
which Bethesda didn't do natively. Like this, the DLSS mod was out in like days. Yeah, I think even hours. They, it was fast. Bethesda, Bethesda could have put that in easily. Yeah, so it, it lends credence to the idea that they were not allowed to. It was a contractual restriction. Which is another weird thing. Anyway, there was even a weird situation where somebody was, they had a DRM'd DLSS mod. Uh, some people figured out through some funky math that they ended up making $40,000 a month off of the subscriptions to that mod. Wow. But then the mod got cracked and it was a whole thing. <laughs> Never knew mods would get there. Jeez, uh, that's not the only option though. There's a free upscaler mod that replaces Starfield's native FSR2 with either DLSS or XDSS. Uh, it's also the most downloaded mod for the game so far. Uh, with Nexus mods showing over half a million downloads. And that's a significant portion of the entire player base. If they have yeah. six million, wow. Yeah. Uh, and, and as a matter of fact, when you look at it, nearly all of the popular mods for Starfield are all performance or UI based. You got to go all the way to the bottom of page three before you start seeing some uh, tasteful modifications to the game's cast. <laughs> tasteful, sure. Uh, truly, there's no greater sign that the PC version is scuffed than modders spending their time fixing performance instead of slapping a juicy rack on a Saturn V rocket. Now, that's what we all want. We're not looking for DLSS. We want the giant tits. NVIDIA's uh, on the case, too. They actually released a driver update today and writing, probably yesterday when you're watching this, specifically to boost performance on their 30 and 40 series cards. They claim the update produces a 5% average increase in performance on 40 series GPUs, so... That's good, but you know, lots to lots of performance to go, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, regardless, many PC users feel neglected out there, which is sadly not at all that surprising to any of us that have been around for a Bethesda release or two. Mm -hmm. Been around this block before. As Reddit user nine underscores nine put it, if a company could sell a car without brakes or lights while knowing that somebody else would install them after the sale at no cost to the company, and then the buyer of the car would happily buy every single new model, then guess what? the company will always sell broken cars. They are exactly right. Uh, that is the free market in action. <laughs> it is, it's just, I wanna get the head pads, man. Those games are so fun on PC, it's just weird that they're not acknowledged, like at all. Bethesda always crafts their games entirely around a controller and then puts in PC controls after the fact as an afterthought, and it's baffling. It, some things seem like they'd be so easy to do. A, a particular annoyance of mine and, and this is kind of a good thing. Like now you can actually put binds to go right to the inventory. You don't have to go through the radial menu or something, but you can't do that from another menu screen. So if you're on the map and you hit I, nothing happens. You have to back out and hit I to go back into the inventory. It's just like tiny little things that kind of show that there could have been more acknowledgement about your ability to hit a keyboard, but whatever. It works. Sky UI is really good. Also, Lawrence, you installed the DLSS mod for Starfield, right? How does, how's it looking? Uh, a little bit better. I, I noticed the frame drops right away. Like second one, I, I turned around and it was like, doot, doot, doot. It was just really stuttery. It didn't feel good. Uh, it got a lot better once it kind of settled into itself, I think. The DLS, DLSS mod does help kind of pave over those stutters a little bit, but they're still there. It's, it's not the hyper buttery PC experience uh, that's, you know, something like Doom Eternal might be. But also, it doesn't need to be Doom Eternal, and it's not trying to be that, so... It's still fun to play, and it's loads better with FOV and DLSS than it was vanilla, that's for sure. The FOV was starting to really bug me. It feels really claustrophobic on PC when you're that close to the monitor, and it's just locked off at a... Like at a TV across the room FOV. Yeah, it's really weird. Uh, also, I have the worst possible story about this. I have a, an NVIDIA card. 4090. I literally just upgraded my PC for Starfield and an Intel CPU and everything works perfectly. Yeah? Yeah. Nobody wants to hear this, but like, and it's the worst, per worst, you know, like one friend who's always like, oh, it worked for me. It, it worked for me, unfortunately. Like I just, I turned it on and everyone's like, where are your performance issues? And I was like, I didn't have any. Like occasionally it'll drop below 60 uh, when I'm like walking through cities or whatever, but it doesn't stutter. I just lose frames. So otherwise it's great. And it's very, very strange. So I feel like I'm super lucky and I'm not like not changing anything. Cause I'm like, whatever, it's working. <laughs> like, I'll just play it. So you're, you were due for some good PC luck. You've had a, you've had a rough run. <laughs> I, so. it's true. If Starfield's the one gimme you get. I think you've earned it. Oh, well, thanks Lawrence. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, hey, these patrons, uh, we have an inside games, Patreon, and they are supporting us every single month on that Patreon. These patrons have installed every mod that they can find. Sherwin Sanchez, Nightboard, Xander, and Aiden Foley. 
Enjoy the boobs on the Saturn V rocket. My patrons are much more austere. They're saving all their mods until marriage. Pit Strip, Loveless, Scotty Ryan, and Nick Calderon. It'll be a magical evening when you first install those mods. <laughs> and before you go, here is the best meme ever. We need some Family Guy mods for uh, for Starfield. Where are those at, man? I need to go to that Taco Bell cantina. Dude, imagine like a little monitor in every birth of your ship playing Family Guy on loop. Oh, wow. I would see and then I would never miss the content that I love. <laughs>